Hello and welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. I'm Stuart Deming. And I'm Aaron Pennington. The largest online sports betting company is opening a major restaurant and bar downtown. After the closing of Arnold's Cafe, the property is expected to sell to the nearby Paseo South. Plus, one of California's best is making its way to Tennessee, but how long will it be before we can enjoy its benefits? We'll talk about all of this and more on Nashville Daily. By California's best making its way to Tennessee. Of course, we mean in and out. If you have not heard the news, we're going to be talking about that later in the episode. Uh, but I'm going to address everybody from in and out coming from California to Tennessee. Welcome. Welcome. And if you are looking for property in the area, we have the guy for you. That's Brad Reynolds, one of the sponsors of Nashville Daily. You can text or call him 615 856 3270 guarantee you he is going to get you the best deal and find you somewhere that you love here in middle Tennessee. You can f- learn more about Brad Reynolds at thinkbrad.com or visit him on, him on Instagram at Brad underscore Reynolds underscore Nashville. All right. I'm just uh, having Greg, the Google guy on the street, multiple streets. It's that his, is it's his home. It's his home. Uh, so just pulled that up. Okay. So the first thing is there is a new bar coming into downtown Nashville and it's a really interesting location. Well, yeah. I was about to say the location is not new. The location is pretty interesting. Yeah. The, the location was a museum at one point and this was the George Jones museum, the possum. Uh, and he just has some really interesting stories of how he got a DUI on a John Deere tractor in Brentwood and just so many stories that John Deere tractor was in this museum at one point. Uh, it was a three story <laughs> bar. It's um, huge. was it three stories or four stories? No, it was three. Stories. I think I believe it was three. Okay. So yeah. the first floor was like your regular, like bar walking in on second Avenue. Your second floor was yeah. this huge museum, uh, had this massive rocking chair, that John Deere tractor, a bunch of stuff, uh, and memorabilia for George Jones. And I think there was a third private floor, and then there was a rooftop bar. I was about to say, I couldn't remember if the third floor was the rooftop or the fourth floor was the rooftop. Yeah, I couldn't remember. It's I've been mostly a, been on the fourth or the rooftop and the first floor. I went to the museum like in there. three times. Yeah. Um, so it was really interesting. And then I saw them when once they announced that they were closing, I saw them taking out all the artifacts and loading them into this like secure van. <laughs> Nice. So that, that's my experience with the George Jones Museum, but it looks like there's a change of hands. This this building sold. Uh, wow, it sold last year in in in, in uh, July for twenty eight point five million dollars. Yeah, that's pricey. <laughs> uh, so that's a big one right there. Let, let's show this building real quick. Um, so Greg the Google guy is on Second Avenue right now, and he is right next to the George Jones. Uh, or what was the George Jones Museum, yeah. and now it's going to be a different type of bar. Uh, for sure. So it's going from a museum to <laughs> a restaurant and bar and social uh, from the the company. What does it mean to have a social? That's a great question. I don't know. Okay. Uh, like there's a restaurant on First and Demumbrian called Hampton Social, is it because um, people are getting social? No, I think it's just like another like social club is kind of a hangout spot, but oh. most of the time social now refers to restaurants. So I don't really, there's not really a difference anymore. I don't think. Uh, but so now here's what's happening with the George Jones. Uh, so we got to go back in 2021 for this sports betting company, draft Kings entered into a partnership with sports and social. And that's a concept by Live Dining and Entertainment, a division of the Cordish companies. And that's according to a 2021 DraftKings uh, press release. So uh, DraftKings, the sports betting company, uh, the release also identified Nashville as a market they were targeting for a location. Uh, a chief business officer at DraftKings said, by aligning with one of the fastest growing entertainment concepts in the country, we have now uh, we now have the opportunity to bring our world-class products to life by offering engaging, interactive, and fan-first destinations to skin-in-the-game customers. 
Um, it's unclear when this is. So here's the place. It's going to be called Sports and Social. It's unclear when they will open their doors in Nashville. Uh, but renovation plans for the three-story building, three stories, uh, emerged in a permit filed with Metro in January, uh, early January, January 5th to be exact. Um, and the project details are listed as casual but upscale. I think they they will be open by CMA Fest. I, I, I have a feeling they'll be open by CMA Fest. Yeah, that would be a good move for sure. I have a rendering of what their oh, do you really? look like on 2nd Avenue. All yeah. right. So here is the rendering. Sports okay. and social, raising the sports bar. Uh, Draft Kings. Uh, PBR. PBR. Professional bull riding. Oh, I was like, they got sponsored by PBR beers. Like, that doesn't that's, even look like their logo. Yeah, no, that's professional, professional bull, bull riding. riding. Okay. So, Which is, you know, honestly, I'm glad that they're bringing that. Uh, and if they could make bets off of that, of how long people are going to last on, a cow. on there, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. Uh, well, especially because a lot of places have taken that away from their restaurants in downtown Nashville. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a huge attraction for people. So um, I think they're they're smart in bringing that bringing that back because they I always wonder, have the lines. I wonder if this facility is going to do like political bets, too, for like. Well, I, I mean, campaigns. if you could imagine all the DraftKings offers just on their app. Yeah. Um, the, the so, political stuff. I'm going to say no strictly because they're mainly sports. But there's a there's a political like <laughs> betting site. There there yeah. is. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if DraftKings has that or not. What, I'm what's gonna fascinating say no. is literally right down the block on Second Avenue. There's another sports betting bar opening as well. Yeah, uh, they're taking over Joe's Crab Shack, right? Yeah, Joe's Crab Shack. So there's going to be two and betting ba betting bars, and that's from Barstool. Barstool, right? And then you yeah. have DraftKings. It's going to be really interesting. It, it's very interesting. Out. It's kind of like yeah. when I, so I went into when I was like 10, I went to San Francisco and I only remember like three things from that trip. It was very windy and cold. There were a lot of seals on the piers and uh, I spent seals, a lot of time. The most important part. Uh, yeah. And I spent a lot of time in this place called the ESPN zone. It was kind of like if Dave and Buster's was truly like just sports games. Okay. And that's what ESPN zone was. And that's what I can imagine this. These places are going to be just for adults because of all yeah. the betting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think with second Avenue going through the renovation phases and everything from yeah. the Christmas day bombing, like that's going to become the hub of sports betting in downtown. Y yeah. Oh, I mean, who, who would have thought down. like in, uh, in next year it's in, or in two years, it's going to be like on the list of what's there to do in downtown Nashville, like sports betting yeah, sports is going to be on that list. Big thing. And I wonder if, I wonder if you could bet on the pedal tavern. <laughs> This so, person's going to fall off yeah. $5. So here's the interesting thing, because it's only online sports gambling that's allowed in Tennessee. Yeah, well, um, really interesting. So you have to and, have the app while you're eating. Yeah, the and then Kentucky doesn't even technically allow for casinos, but Mint Gaming Hall, as soon as you cross the Tennessee-Kentucky yeah, yeah. border, because it's horse racing, um, it's okay. is, is the only thing that's allowed there. So I wouldn't be surprised if Mint Gaming Hall found a way to come down to have a Tennessee as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, as some kind of concept. Uh, it would be very interesting. They advertise very heavily in the Nashville market. They mm -hmm. probably they probably get a lot of Nashville people up there. They probably advertise as much as Dollywood. <laughs> they, I bet they do. I see that thing <laughs> everywhere. Dollywood <laughs> advertises a ton in this city. Yeah. Uh, so there was a restaurant in the Gulch that was open for over 40 years. They recently shut down, and I said this on the podcast, the development across the street was going to end up buying them. And then what and happened? And they made an offer. They probably <laughs> couldn't refuse. And so this is Arnold's. We have Greg the Google guy on the street. He ran from second Avenue. He, uh, I don't know how he did it. He just, he's lightning fast. Uh, but this is where Arnold's is located. This development that I'm talking about they own the, this old warehouse two hands is an australian uh, cafe which i've heard amazing things Ooh, about okay we may have to go try it soon aaron but as you can see this development is massive uh it's going to be a huge it's skyscraper be even more massive this. uh we've talked about this development multiple times on the podcast we'll link those episodes in the show notes but i was correct in saying i, I believe this developer is going to buy arnold's because i believe this parking lot right here uh, they own this. I believe they bought the Jackalope building, uh, which is down this way. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time before Carter Vintage Guitars is gone as well. Yeah. Paseo South is going to own 8th Avenue from the bridge, from all after the, the train the bridge, bridge all to, the way up to the new party foul. Yeah. To the new party foul on Division Street. So um, that's that's going to be uh, I mean, so far, everything we've seen that they've done is pretty good, pretty 
uh, innovative in what they're doing. They they seem to have a good idea of what they want and a pretty good vision as well. All right. Speaking of uh, restaurants and food, Stuart, you and I went to the farmer's market uh, with Greg, the Google guy, yeah, lately. Yeah, Greg. He was, we were just hanging out. We, we had like, to pull him in off the street. We needed, we needed and, to get him uh, some lunch because he was looking skinny. <laughs> and so we went to the farmer's market, and we went to, I believe the place is called uh, Chicago. Is it Giro's or Euros or um, somebody educate me on how to say that because I've heard like 20 different ways. Um, but we went. That was the first time that I have had uh, that style of food, and it was absolutely incredible. Uh, I believe you had. I can't remember what you had. I now. had the falafel. That's what you had. Falafel salad. Yes. Um, so I kind of learned about what that was, and then I also had uh, just kind of a general plate of rice salad, chicken, beef, um, and then there's uh, one other thing like kind of pita bread on my plate, um, and so did that you was the, really did you good. You have the tzatziki sauce, like the cucumber. I believe so. Sauce on it. Yeah, yes. I, think, I think you did. Yeah, that um, was really good. It's a great restaurant. Highly re- would highly recommend it. And the prices were fantastic for the amount of food that you got. Yeah. I think I think it was a very fair trade off. I, I think it was too. Like I'd take that any day, every day, compared to some of the other restaurants in town. So you have on the podcast talked about this Bucky's breakfast burrito for like a year. Yeah, brisket. It's a it's a brisket egg, and I, I can't remember if there's cheese on there, yeah, but it's mostly cheese. brisket there's and some egg. Type of cheese yeah. On it. And I had it the other day because I went to Bucky's and Hallelujah, man, it was good. <laughs> it, was, it was really it's, good. It's one of those things where you, if you're gonna pass by a Bucky's, and if you can do it during the breakfast hours, you really, really try to make it well, there. Yeah, I had because that's worth getting. I had no idea they had a huge selection of breakfast sandwiches either. So like it was oh, like all yeah. sausage and egg sandwiches. The they had four or five different like breakfast tacos. It was fantastic. I would highly recommend it. And I can't wait. I know this has been popping up over all over the place, but Bucky's, uh, there's been a lot of news. They're that taking Bucky's, over. Bucky's is coming to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Okay. I have known about They're coming that. to Clarksville, too. They're coming to Clarksville as well. Uh, and they're also, in, also opening the largest Bucky's in the world, 76,000 square feet in Sevierville. I've Aren't known, they doing one in Jackson, too? I've heard there's rumors of Jackson. Yeah. Um, but I've known about the Bucky's coming to Murfreesboro for about three and a half, four years, <laughs> which is really interesting. And I never been to Bucky's before that point. And I also knew about in and out probably way before most people did, because I was reading everything that was happening in California and how they treated in and out. They were definitely oh, going to be man. relocating their headquarters. We're going to talk about that here in a second, but first we have to talk about our sponsor screened threads. If you're looking to get some Nashville themed merchandise or some scented candles, they have all 50 states that have different scented candles. They're amazing. Uh, you can use the code Nashville Daily get 10% off your online order, or you can visit them in person by visiting Marathon Village. Use the code Nashville Daily get 10% off. That California candle must have not smelled good because uh, a lot of people are there are getting out of there. Out. Um, it's just it's it, it's fascinating because I was I was reading all of the reports about what was happening with In and Out. In and Out. So so what was ha- what was California doing with In and Out? Besides uh, besides like so In and Out, they're a Christian organization. Yep. Uh, they are a family run business. Yep. Uh, and they've been uh, in business for a long time. Right. So besides that part not equating being the most liked business by California in those regards. What else were you seeing? Well, so during uh, the major lockdowns and everything, in and out was allowing in-person dining in some of their restaurants in California. So kind of just against the regulations yeah, so kind again, of things. Against the regulations. Uh, and then there, there, there's just a lot that happened in that two-year period with different in and out restaurants and multiple sheriffs and all these things. But I keep track of these corporations because I just I that's what you I, do. I, I like learning about <laughs> these things. And that's, that's what I do. And so I, I knew there was some rumors of in and out co- possibly coming to Tennessee a couple oh, probably about two or three years ago. I was hearing some rumors from some of my clients that I work with. And that's the interesting thing is like I hear things way before a lot of people do. I just never you have to wait so long oh, yeah. to, to find out if that's true or not. Yeah, but it, like it's like the Apple store. So like I knew there was a downtown Apple store coming in 2014. Right. And so like I, I was sitting on that information for multiple years. And it's just it, there's there's a lot of things I learned from some of the, my clientele. 
that I probably shouldn't know before other people, but I know these things. And so, uh, and it, it's really fascinating because it was no surprise when you texted me uh, the Governor Bill Lee tweet that in and out was coming to Tennessee. Yeah. I'm like, it, it makes sense that they were either going to move to Texas or into Tennessee. Yeah. But there's so many people from California that have been requesting in and out come to Tennessee. They already have locations in Texas. This just makes more sense so that they can really expand eastward uh, going into the Florida market, the Georgia market, the Tennessee market, and the Carolina market. You know, it was so funny to see the uh – it was so funny to see the Instagram post by in and out of them making their move to Tennessee. That's it. Let's throw that up. And uh, because uh, there are so many people who commented on that because so when in and out made their announcement, it's not just restaurants. So in and out is basing a new corporate hub in Franklin. Um, and the, so their plan is to open restaurants in Tennessee and plant a corporate hub in Tennessee, promising, according to the Tennessee, an $125 million investment into the state. Uh, and it says the California-based burger restaurant estimates its expansion into Tennessee will create 275 jobs. And that's just the corporate side of things. Uh, they plan to open a 100,000-square-foot office in the Berry Farms area, Franklin, wow. uh, by 2026. That will uh, house departments to support the company's growth in Tennessee, such as operations, management, and human resources. Uh, construction is expected to begin late next year. That's just their investment into Tennessee. So it's so funny to see uh, people commenting from Kentucky, Alabama, forty-two uh, New York comments, uh, and <laughs> yeah, and, and and all of these things. I'll throw this Instagram post up there. And like can we, everybody was asking, can you bring a public? Can you bring it in and out to Kentucky, Alabama, New York? And and in and out was just like in the most polite way saying we're just focused on Tennessee. Uh, so it was very funny to see that. Yeah, they're just focused on Tennessee now because they have to build the headquarters and build a few branches here. But eventually right. they'll start expanding. Yeah. So Nashville is going to be the first location for in and out here in Tennessee. Where do you think? Where do you think in Nashville this is going to go? Oh my gosh, man! In and out, uh, they would be. I, I think uh, I have so. So I have two two locations. I don't know where the second one's going to be. They, I, I almost think they. Ha so, but I don't know. So I've never been to California. Okay. I've never. Well, I've been to San Francisco. We talked about that earlier on the episode. I've never been to an In and Out in California. So the only time I've, I've ever had In and Out. Yeah, I, and I've never been to one in in any other state. So I don't know how they choose their locations. Like we know how Chick-fil-A chooses their locations. And we, we know, know Hattie B's. Right. So yeah. we can, we can see how these, uh, but I don't know how in and out chooses. I have a few guesses, but I'll let you go first. Well, so I have, I've only had in and out once and it, was it in I, California? It was, it was in LA. So okay. the TV show, big brother flew me yeah, out yeah. to interview for the television show, big brother. I was not allowed to leave the hotel. I was not allowed to interact with any of the other uh, people in the room. But it you was, could go to in and out I could not. I had to get <laughs> in and out delivered to my hotel room. So that's literally the only time I've ever had in and out I had uh, the animal style burger delivered to my hotel room. This is like five or six years, probably six years ago. And uh, that was a real interesting experience. I think we need to save that uh, that story of me going to California and interviewing for the television yeah. show. Oh, for further. sure, for sure. Once we do the new format of our show, uh, it's a really fascinating story. But In and Out was great. The burger was great. The fries were great. I wish like I had it like fresh instead of delivered. Um, and so that that was a really interesting thing. My if they're opening two locations in Nashville, I think the first location is going to be closer to Broadway. Um, that, that's okay. So that's my guess. Somewhere in the Fifth and Broad Nashville Yards area, yeah. uh, that that is going to be my Nashville, guess. Kind of Nashville like how Raising Yards. Canes is is moving on Broadway. Yeah. Either Fifth and Broad, um, not Assembly Food Hall. Like this would be a a bigger operation, not like a it'll little. Be, it'll be bigger than Shake Shack downtown. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so something something like that. I think the Nashville Yards would be perfect because of the Amazon being there already. So they already have some of that clientele that knows in and out products. Yeah. Um, I, I think the Nashville Yards, it, it could be a very good steeple, uh, but I think it would still be closer to Broadway, maybe something on 2nd Avenue. If they did something, the, my second guess is Midtown. Um, it, there's still like, enough like real near estate. Near Broadwest or near the dairy plant? 
Or no, not near the dairy plant. Somewhere in between Broad West and Centennial. Okay. Uh, there's still a lot of open space out there. Because of all the students from California? From well, Vanderbilt? no, just because of the amount of, of car traffic plus the success with other restaurants in that area. Um, like, uh, um, what's that? Uh, cookout, places yeah. like that yep. in that area. Um, but then I could also see them picking like a, a Brentwood location. So okay. uh, th- those are those are my first guesses. Uh, I think the it's interesting. So what I hope doesn't happen is that it's a Whataburger situation oh, in Nashville yeah. uh, that because I've never had it. My, the, all, all of my California friends love it. Love, love, love in and out. Um, and, but the, the Texas people here loved Waterbroker and I had it and I have I no desire I, to I go back. Not, this is this is interesting. I just um, need to throw this up from the Tennessee. Okay, so, real quick. So I, so what is, what is going on here? So they this is the article <laughs> for the Tennessee and Governor Bill Lee announces that in and out Burger is coming to Tennessee. And it that's, looks like a flight aviation. Yeah, like, I think that's that's probably a, a, a code coding error on the Tennesseans part and probably from the FAA article. Yeah, instead. yeah that's uh, that's interesting because um, <laughs> I, I do not have that on my Tennessee article. Yeah, p- people are going to comment below. They're like, you don't like Whataburger. I don't like Whataburger. I'll, it, I'll did be, not, be, it did not impress me. I'll, Their I'll spicy ketchup is good, Yeah, but there's nothing there that has impressed me. I had Whataburger twice in Texas. Oh, so you even had it in Texas. I, I've had it like I had it at their first location near Dallas, I believe. And I had food poisoning for two days oh. from both experiences of Whataburger. So oh, no. I have not had a Tennessee Whataburger. Oh, no. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm guessing In-N-Out is good. I've never heard a bad experience from a Californian about In-N-Out or anybody who's had it. So my, I, my I'm, experience, I'm very excited. I, I assume it's very similar to a Shake Shack. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere in between a Shake Shack and an ML Rose yeah. kind of experience. Uh, because Emil Rose does have an animal style burger, so that'll be very interesting when <laughs> In and Out comes in. Yeah, are they going to get sued? That's I don't know. I don't know. I don't think In and Out really uh, knows about it. But yeah, that, that's that's <laughs> that's intriguing. So uh, let us know in the comments below. Are you excited about In and Out? Uh, the burgers I'm most excited about right now is a place called Cletus, and uh, that's located near downtown Nashville. We have a video coming out of Cletus soon. Uh, their burgers are fantastic. They are. All right. Uh, let us know. Closing thoughts. Guess where they fell in love with Tennessee? Smoky Mountains. Smoky Mountains. So uh, uh, the yeah. uh, all the uh, in and out people, they had some people visit Tennessee, went to the Smoky Mountains, absolutely loved it, and that kind of solidified their Tennessee decision, um, uh, plus all the other economic benefits of the state. Let us know what you think about in and out coming to Tennessee in the comments. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.